Hello and welcome to this, the eighth of our eight webinar series describing the technology of the XX network. We're delighted to have you join us today uh, and wishing everyone a great holiday season. Um, our, our focus today is going to be tying XX all together. And by that we mean we're eager, you know, we, we've had several webinars covering a variety of topics around the technology for the XX network. Um, we're happy to expand on any of that and want to really focus it on your questions. And so I've been grabbing questions across all of the different social media platforms of ours, but also for those of you joining us live throughout this webinar, you can click the Q and A button down at the bottom of your screen to pose a question to our team here at the XX network. So really looking forward to that engagement and back and forth here. Our rules for today are really simple. Number one, again, we're looking forward to the back and forth and we simply ask that everyone be respectful of each other uh, throughout that webinar. And second, uh, this is a format where we're talking about the technology of the XX network. We ask that no discussion of the coin sale take place here. And for that matter, nothing that's said today should be interpreted as either investment advice or a solicitation to purchase any kind of financial instrument. And so that's, that's it for the rules here. Um, let's go to the next slide and introduce the folks sp speaking to you today. Um, on the next slide here, my name is Peter Somerville and I am the head of Node and Developer Relations at Praxis. And so for those of you who uh, are a node operator or a developer of uh, dApps, always happy to be in touch with you. Joining me today are William Carter. Uh, Will is the COO of Praxis, uh, has been leading the team to really develop the consensus mechanism um, and the, the blockchain technology. And then also Benjamin Winger. Uh, ben is the VP of architecture for Elixir uh, and his team has really programmed out and implemented the AlphaNet, which has been running for the past few months. Uh, hopefully most of you have a chance by now to use the XX Messenger. And if you're using that, that's running on top of this AlphaNet. And so uh, between the three of us, we're really eager to engage with you, you know, talk about the topics that you wanna hear more about today and answer your questions. And so with that, I'm gonna hand the microphone over to Ben uh, to the, kind of start at the high level of What's our vision? What is the XX network trying to achieve? Thanks, Peter. Um, so when we started these presentations, we first question I want to ask is what is the XX network? Um, and you know, we have what we call a problem statement, and what we're really looking at changing in the world. Um, and there's an evolving dossier society, which is what, something I'd like to call it, where business models of much of the internet have turned around to not selling services, but collecting information, or even collecting information alongside the selling of services. And you know, for, this has been used to advertise, it's been used, um, but, this information has not been stored properly and the future of how it can be used to influence free and open societies is really not known and quite, um, um, uh, it's quite vast. So, um, you know, our goal is to kind of look to the future of the internet, which fundamentally protects the rights and privileges of people and allows them to use the internet safely. Um, and a core approach to this is to return power over information back to the user, um, return the um, uh, returning privacy. Uh, so we're going to be, you know, do a quick overview and then taking questions on as to how we plan to meet this goal. Um, so we're going to pass over to Will to talk a little bit about the XX coin. Thanks, Ben. So yeah, as Ben said. 
we are going to recap some of the information we covered in previous webinars just to kind of jog your memory, memory and hopefully it inspires some new questions from you guys. Uh, we're going to start with the XX coin, and this is the native cryptocurrency of the XX network. It is used to incentivize development and operation of the platform. Uh, it's used to incentivize governance, and it is the primary medium for exchanging monetary value over the network. And if you go to the next slide, so we covered a handful of topics. Uh, we did this especially in webinar two um, about uh, three different coin structures uh, or mechanisms to send XX coin to someone else in the network. Uh, the first of which is denominated tokens. Uh, these are the most private structure, um, but have one-time use addresses. Uh, we covered wallets, which give increased functionality by allowing reusable addresses, but uh, slightly weaken the privacy properties of the transactions uh, in exchange for that functionality. And then we covered multi-signatures, um, which can be on denominated or wallet-based coins, and they give additional functionality in the form of, say, a joint custody wallet or a threshold signature wallet where you need, say, two out of three signatures um, in order to send a transaction. Uh, we talked about the importance of quantum security, and we identified some... Uh, well, we identified Watts Plus, which is our hash-based signature um, as the cryptographic primitive that allows us to achieve quantum security. Um, unfortunately, one of the symptoms, I would say, of quantum secure one-time use hash-based signatures, uh, of hash-based signatures, is that they are one-time use, which basically means that for every signature you want to generate, you need a new public and private key. And finally, we focused on denominated coin transactions as the preferred coin structure to securely transmit XX coin uh, while preserving privacy. So this is the coin structure that really leverages uh, the Elixir technology. Next slide. So also in webinar two, we focused on XX consensus and XX consensus is the groundbreaking consensus mechanism at the heart of the XX network. Uh, we started by identifying five requirements for mainstream adoption. Um, and if you, you go on the next slide, I think we can look at those. Yeah, so we identified these five requirements for mainstream adoption. Um, and this is really what drove the technical development of XX consensus. And these were in turn mapped to three high level principles. Um, before I like dig into those just a little bit, uh, David Chom in his CWI talk, uh, laid out a similar uh, parallel set of, of principles for the development of the entire network. So I encourage people to go check out that talk, um, which I think Peter could probably post in the webinar chat. Um, but so going through these requirements really quick to, to jog your memory. Um, speed, the principle of speed, basically in our minds meant finality in seconds and tens of thousands of transactions a second. Uh, in order to support global adoption and uh, to enable responsive applications that are built on the network. Scalability uh, meant enabling thousands of nodes. Uh, so these are the nodes that the community runs. Um, and it's important that uh, we have the scalable, scalability properties uh, to enable thousands of these uh, community members to run nodes in consensus to both support decentralization and for robustness of the network. And security, which meant uh, the network is robust in the presence of internal internal attacks, and uh, that it's resistant to the accelerating development of quantum computing capability. Next slide. And we were able to achieve these principles using uh, five key approaches, which we described. Uh, the first of which is NodeCon. This is how we initialize the network in a quantum secure manner. This is also um, one way that we mitigate Sybils in the network, uh, especially when it's uh, at its earliest stages. We talked about committed randomness. Uh, this is a unique way to generate a randomness chain, which is um, how we create a manipulatable um, and unpredictable global randomness every block. Uh, we use that randomness to do something called endorser sampling, and 
this gives us our speed and scalability properties by uh, enabling us to only transmit the data heavy transactions to a constant size number of nodes rather than in most networks where you have to um, propagate a transaction to the entire network. And then we talked about compact endorsements. Uh, these are particularly important for, for uh, mobile clients, uh, which we're talking about in just a second. Um, and this is just a, a new novel quantum secure signature, uh, quantum secure multi-signature, um, which proves finality of a block. And then we had efficient fallbacks. And so this is like any time that the network gets disrupted, we can efficiently recover um, and return back to uh, normal consensus. Next slide. So using these approaches um, with those requirements in mind, uh, these are the properties we've achieved. These first two properties uh, are really what enable our speed and scalability, as I mentioned on the previous slide. Um, using endorser sampling. Um, as I said, we don't have to propagate data heavy transactions to the entire network. And so this reduces communication complexity to constant, um, to a constant size when, when dealing with propagating transactions and then uh, linear size or linear complexity uh, when, when propagating the endorsements um, of nodes on the finality of a block throughout the network. So this is extremely important. This is what allows us to, to reach our speed and scale goals. Egalitarian consensus means all nodes have an equal amount of power. It allows us to avoid, say, centralizing concentrations of power, um, like in a proof of work or proof of stake platform. Um, and both, or I guess all three of these top properties are enabled by committed randomness, which drives node scheduling. And this randomness, you know, outside of its use inside the network can also be used outside the network as a unmanipulatable and relatively unpredictable randomness beacon for say other applications that are built on the network. And finally, uh, this is also, I guess, probabilistically unpredictable scheduling. This is what enables egalitarian consensus. Um, we'll talk uh, we talked a little bit about this in webinar two. And then uh, compact quantum secure proof of finality. Uh, um, this both speeds up consensus um, by reducing the, the, um, the proof of finality within the consensus mechanism. Um, but it also allows for, say, a mobile client to efficiently check the finality of their transactions, uh, which is import, uh, particularly important for them given their limited computational and network bandwidth. Um, and with that, I think we're going to hand it back to Ben. Thanks, Will. So another topic that we covered uh, in quite a amount of detail was uh, the XX communications layer. So this is built on mixed network technology. Um, and I'll describe the, the highest level. So mixed network technology is essentially the idea that we can send a bunch of messages, a bunch of payloads into uh, a set of nodes each node reordering and re-encrypting them. And this creates a property where all of the nodes would have to say what they did. Basically, it all have to be broken to be able to break the anonymity of the messages. It's a very powerful security property. Um, so uh, Elixir um, uh, and the team that I've been working with has been implementing CMIX, which is, or variant of CMIX, which is a protocol which allows for accelerated mix nets, which can actually work at the scale that is needed um, uh, for real uh, widespread use. Um, we also discussed the integration of these different, of these the Elixir and Praxis together, and as well what the network as a whole would look like. So we talked about the nodes, uh, components called the gateways, um, which are uh, basically uh, edge servers, which uh, act, which are scalable and can act to solve DDoS problems and run on a per node basis. We talked about the scheduling of the mixed network and how that is pulled in from, uh, from uh, the Praxis consensus work. We talked about transaction ordering and how um, uh, uh, the mixed network can be used to order transactions in the event that that is needed. Um, we talked about how they can integrate to allow receipts which prove the presence of data in a block without the user revealing that they even uh, were involved in the block. 
Um, and then we talked about how they can run simultaneously on the same hardware asynchronously and how they really, their hardware usage profiles are almost completely complementary, allowing them to run simultaneously without interfering. And then we talked about a deployment strategy and how we've deployed the alpha up until now. Um, we also, we had the third seminar, which covered primarily our governance strategy and the um, uh, also token economics. So we discussed, you know, governance in the XX network and also the technologies we plan to use to build an egalitarian uh, um, direct governance process, um, which solves many of the problems that we've seen in currently existing social governance based uh, blockchains. Um, and so the, you know, these technologies are random sample voting, decoy ballots, and secure verifiable election technology, which uh, members of our team have been working on, including David Chom, have been working on and have deployed for over the past uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, and we also discussed our token economics, you know, how we believe the network will initialize and a plan to ensure that can happen successfully. We discussed how the network through a system called Postage um, will simultaneously ensure the availability of private communications to um, globally uh, and egalitarianly while incentivizing the network and ensuring the network is able to meet its, uh, to cover its cost and grow. Um, you know, we talked about the details about how this works kind of the internal loop and then how this promotes growth. And, um, uh, the other thing we did is we want to wrap up kind of to the first thing we presented, which is what is all, what um, is needed, which is that David at a CWI talk presented a vision for the core requirements for a globally used blockchain. Um, and these were functionality, robustness, and performance. And, um, you know, we want to talk this one more time because we want to put in the mind of that this is a complete system that is really capable of meeting the needs of the world. Um, so, you know, for functionality, we think that a critical functionality going into the future is metadata shredding. Um, so we've got a communications layer that can do that, and we can flow that into payments and voting through the network. So the entire network benefits from that privacy and benefits from that uh, security layer, which is uh, fairly revolutionary. You know, for robustness, um, we believe that through our governance, it, Secondarily and primarily, our consensus model, um, we're able to um, resist the wide variety of potential attacks that we see on um, uh, on decentralized networks over the next few years, and you know, and even beyond. Um, and you know, we can show, and we're um, working hard on performance where we can actually deliver the kind of performances necessary for you know, a large number of people to really use these uh, networks. So uh, with that, I think that, you know, we're here primarily to answer your questions and to, um, you know, see how, uh, and to hone your understanding of what we are doing.